Hello, this is video number 18, the last one in this series. And in this video, I'd like to give you some tips about practicing and about really efficient and not only efficient, but effective practice. So the first thing, we need to feel really relaxed and really centered. And here is a little exercise that I do and I teach all my students and we do it we can do it before we start practicing we can do it in the middle of our, our practice the idea of this exercise is centering we center around the center of gravity of our body and we rotate it from all the possible angles so here I go I stretch up I'm on my toes I stretch up all the way I come down and I turn to the right. I make sure I breathe, turn to the left. Center, I bend right. Center, bend to the left. center, then I slowly bend forward, no effort at all, everything is easy. I'm sitting down with my heels on the floor, don't forget to breathe, and I move forward, and I sit on my toes. And here the cycle starts again. We go back up. And we're not going to do it the whole thing all the time, but I think two or three times of doing this cycle would be just perfect. And you will feel centered and ready to go into your practice. <laughs> powerful practicing tool I can give you is what we call the stop bow. This is when the bow stops between the notes and we prepare everything for the next note and then we play. This exercise is about coordination, about really understanding the order of events. So here we are, I will do the same jig from the first three this time with stop bow. Now I have two notes, legato. Once more. I have to shift. What am I thinking about when I'm doing this stop bow? Stop bow actually means stop, think, play. It reminds you that every note in the right hand stops where the next note starts. It reminds you to do your finger replacement and to do all the shifts properly as we learned them in the previous videos. This exercise will take, always take you to the next level, even if you're playing a piece perfectly. This exercise will just make a difference for you. Finger replacement. After you do that, Play in a ridiculously slow tempo and apply this topo into a frame of rhythm. Bring it back into a rhythmic framework. So this is the most powerful tool I can offer.
You know, I love juggling, and there's a lot we can learn from juggling. For example, we can learn that balls fall, and this is a fact of life. Just like notes are sometimes wrong, sometimes out of tune, sometimes we miss them, sometimes they don't sound good, that's okay. That's okay, that's part of the game. If one cannot accept the fact that bows fall, one cannot do juggling. This is a fact of life, nothing to do about it. But there's another thing we can learn from juggling. Whenever I start telling people about juggling, the main thing about juggling is that the right action will give the right result. So we're, when we start learning juggling, we never talk about catching the ball. Actually, we'll let the ball drop on purpose. And we concentrate on throwing the ball correctly. This is what we concentrate on. So if we learn to concentrate on the right action, and we do all the exercises, and we use the stop bow exercise for that, then I assure you, you're going to have a wonderful result. Because just like juggling, playing the bass is either easy or impossible.